Hello, hi and welcome to Digimento. So today we will take up a new subtopic that is pollution and uh, in the introduction itself I want to tell you that this is a very important topic because most of the questions for your examination is from this particular topic pollution. So we will be discussing pollution, what is pollution, what are the different types of pollution. We will also see what are the impacts of pollutants on human health. So as I said, this is one of the most important topics for your examination from this unit because most of the questions are asked from this particular subtopic. So uh, let's begin. Uh, so if you have joined the classes, please do send me a hi so that uh, I'll be knowing you have joined. Um, Suprita, hello Suprita. Hi Uraj. Hi Lipika. Okay. Uh, Lipika has said good evening dear ma'am it's like you know when your students call you dear or when you feel that you are very much close to or very dear to your students you feel very happy thank you so much Lipika thanks a lot okay so I think we will start uh, we will just start uh, until others join let's have the introduction and all so we will wait for others also but we will just start with the introduction but before that, this is our channel and if you have not yet subscribed, please do subscribe and also share this video with your friends. And again, uh, if you are preparing for GATE, NTA, UGC, NET or PGT Computer Science, you can avail our online courses. You can visit our website www.digimento.com for more details or you can call to this number for getting more information. Okay, so let's start. Hi Neetu, Neetu has also joined us. Now, uh, okay, so I think we will start. Okay, so uh, let's start with pollution. And as I said, this is the most important subtopic. Okay, so let's start. Now, uh, before that, do you have any idea about what is pollution? Can you put pollution in your own language or in your own words? Pollution, you must be studying about pollution or learning about pollution, maybe from your class fifth or sixth class. So can you put pollution in your own words? Can you just try to give me a definition in your own words? What do you mean by pollution? It can be in very simple terms also. Can you just put it? What is pollution? Suprita has commented unwanted materials mixed in air, land, etc. Yes, unwanted or undesirable materials. Yes, that is correct. Hazards way or unhealthy way to affect. Yes, yes, okay. Hazards or like unhealthy uh, materials, yes. Uh, Suprita has committed unfit for human usage, yes. Um, Lipika has committed it creates hazards which are unhealthy, yes, correct. Hi Sri Lakshmi, hello. Addition of pollution to, a, uh, to any matter that is important for life, yes. So pollution is basically uh, addition of excessive or addition or we can say excessive addition why addition and excessive addition we are saying sometimes you know uh, certain pollutants like for example co2 co2 is a pollutant but uh, just because we add uh, co2 to the atmosphere it will not create pollution why we have learned in greenhouse gases that certain greenhouse gases up to a certain level is very important why greenhouse gases what is the purpose of greenhouse gases the greenhouse gases help in maintaining the temperature cooling and warming of the earth's surface or earth is done by the greenhouse gases but what happens if the greenhouse gases if it exceeds a particular limit, then the temperature increases leading to global warming. So, merely addition of some pollution uh, or pollutants will not uh, bring pollution or some material. Okay, uh, let us put it as some material or some uh, things. So, merely adding some material into the earth will not bring pollution but sometimes it can be because of excessive addition co2 is a pollutant but up to a certain level co2 is necessary for us actually not important it's necessary so that's why we are saying that pollution it is either the addition sometimes you know um, in small quantities is also certain materials if added to the environment it is pollution example is ddt plastic so these are pollution if they are added in small quantities also. So either addition of certain materials or excessive addition. Excessive addition of certain materials like the CO2 etc. 
some quantity of those material is needed for the environment but if the quantity increases then it becomes pollution that is why addition or excessive addition i hope you got it okay uh so i hope you got the difference between addition of some materials and excessive addition certain materials if they are added in small quantities also it creates pollution whereas certain materials if it exceeds a particular limit only then it is pollution okay so it is defined as addition or excessive addition of certain materials certain material so these materials or certain materials it is the pollutants okay so certain materials to the physical environment physical environment is either water air or land mass making is it less fit or unfit for life so this is uh, the definition of pollution okay uh, so the points that you have mentioned in the comments only i have discussed but little more technically that is the only difference the idea that you conveyed was all right okay so it is addition of uh, excess material or sorry addition or excessive addition of certain materials to the physical environment making is it let less fit or unfit for human life that is uh, why pollutants are undesirable material so they are undesirable material they are not required so they are undesirable material and if they are added to the physical environment then it makes life in earth difficult or unfit okay now what are pollutants pollutants are those materials pollutants those materials or factors which cause adverse effect on the natural quality of any component of the environment so pollutants are those materials or those factors which cause an adverse effect on the natural quality of any component of the earth so those materials pollutants means those materials which causes a negative impact on the natural quality that is the earth has its own natural quality so a natural quality let us take for example the water in the river ocean sea etc especially in fresh water uh, sources like the rivers ocean and the sea etc they are not fresh water they are saline water so let us take the example of fresh water sources pond or rivers etc so <coughs> uh, there is a natural quality of that water again in case of soil also there is a natural quality uh, in some places there are certain types of soil in which certain type of agriculture can be uh, done or certain crops can be cultivated so it is because of the natural quality of the soil because of the fertility natural fertility of the soil then again other examples water soil hmm, can you think of some other examples okay vegetation there are certain forest from which you get a lot of you know uh, food uh, or wood or bamboo uh, even honey or things like that so vegetation so there is a natural quality of the environment so <coughs> pollutants are those materials which cause an adverse impact or a negative impact to the natural quality of any component of the environment i i hope this much is clear for you what is pollution and what are pollutants i hope this much is clear for you mm, now let's continue but before that if you have any doubts please put in it in the comment sections regarding pollution and pollutants if you want to know something more about it also you can put it so uh, do let me know in the comment section neetu has told me it's clear what about others if it's clear we will move ahead and uh, yeah so i think nobody has yeah okay we will move forward okay next we will discuss some of the broader classification of pollutants some broad classifications like for example primary pollutant secondary pollutant we will see quantitative pollutant and uh, qualitative pollutant biodegradable and non biodegradable so some uh classification some broader classification we will see <coughs> first classification is primary and secondary pollutants so primary pollutants and secondary pollutants now um okay from the slide itself it's clear what is primary and secondary now i'll put it in simple words mm, primary pollutants means okay okay primary pollutants not able to write sorry primary pollutants means those persist in the form in which they are added to the environment that is 
addition of those components or those materials into the environment itself causes pollution they are primary pollutants so primary pollutants means those components or those materials when they are added to the environment that in itself that is the form in which they are added to the environment that in itself is pollution or it causes pollution so primary pollutants persist in the form of uh, form in which they are added to the environment for example ddt plastic etc so uh, if plastic or ddt if they are added to the environment uh, they in itself are pollutants like when you uh, throw some garbage plastic waste to the environment the plastic waste that you throw that itself in its form itself it is a pollutant whereas secondary pollutants now Secondary pollutants means they are not directly pollutants or in the form itself they are not pollutants but they are formed by the interaction among the primary pollutants. So they are formed as a result of interaction among the primary pollutants. Example is peroxyacetyl nitrate uh, which is called PAN. It's formed by interaction of nitrogen oxides and uh, hydrocarbons okay i will give other examples also which will make you understand better about secondary pollutants so secondary pollutants before that you have to be clear with what is primary pollutants so primary pollutants means that in whatever form you are uh, throwing it or whatever form you are releasing those pollutants or materials into the environment they are pollutants in that form itself so For example, plastic. If you throw plastic into the environment, the form itself, that is uh, in the form in which you uh, throw this plastic waste, that itself is a pollutant. Whereas secondary pollutant, these primary pollutants, they react with some of the environmental factors. It can be air, it can be water, it can be soil or it can be even between two primary pollutants. So after reacting or after interacting with uh, either two primary pollutants interacting with each other or a primary pollutant interacting with any of the environmental factors like the air, water, soil, etc. It is called what? As a secondary pollutant. Now I'll give you an easy example from which you can understand it better. We have learned about the ozone layer depletion. Now uh, acid rain. We have learned all this acid rain, ozone layer depletion etc. <laughs> so these are caused due to secondary pollutants. Why? Because these gases that is uh, in case of ozone layer the CFCs chlorofluorocarbons which are released these chlorofluorocarbons are the primary pollutants. Now when these chlorofluorocarbons reach the stratosphere or when it reaches the ozone where, which is found in the stratosphere what happens it is reacting or it is interacting with the ozone to cause the ozone depletion. So finally the uh, result that is the interaction of CFCs with the ozone it creates ozone layer depletion same is the case with acid rain also so basically what happens in case of primary pollutants in the form in which they are released into the environment in that form itself they are pollutants whereas secondary pollutants they react or interact with some of the environmental factors or with the two primary pollutants so that will cause um, them to become a secondary pollutant so i hope you understood that uh okay neetu is asking me pan can make which pollution what is its impact so uh pan it is uh, peroxyacetyl nitrate um, it can be seen in different forms and it can be uh, like uh, it can pollute uh, soil again uh, through leaching it can also cause uh, water pollution or eutrophication also i will uh, discuss about that we are going to discuss each and every pollutant in detail we will come to that in detail also sumati has joined the class hi sumati okay so uh, primary and secondary pollutant is that clear for you if no please let me know in the comment section okay uh, now let's come to quantitative and qualitative pollutants so quantitative pollutants and qualitative pollutants 
क्वांटिटेटिव मींस दोज पोल्यूटेंट्स दैट ऑकर इन नेचर सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट डिफरेंस बिटवीन क्वांटिटेटिव एंड क्वालिटेटिव सो क्वांटिटेटिव पोल्यूटेंट्स दे ऑकर इन नेचर एंड बिकम पोल्यूटेंट व्हेन देयर कंसंट्रेशन लेवल रीचेस बियॉन्ड द थ्रेशोल्ड लेवल एग्जांपल इज कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड नाइट्रोजन ऑक्साइड एटसेट्रा इफ यू सी CO2 और कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इट ऑकर्स नेचुरली बट द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट apart from uh, the natural occurrence when the quantity of carbon dioxide is increased may be due to man made activities like for example emission so when uh, these pollutants cross a particular threshold limit or when the quantity of these pollutants increase then it becomes a uh, pollutant and that is quantitative pollutants now in quantitative pollutants it is the quantity of pollutant that is released into the earth that determines whether it is a pollutant or not now as we discussed in the earlier case also co2 or carbon dioxide it is naturally found in the atmosphere now the problem is that and we require co2 also it's a greenhouse gas and greenhouse gases they are very important in maintaining the the uh, temperature of the earth's atmosphere but the problem here is that when the level of co2 or the quantity of co2 increases above a particular threshold then it becomes a pollutant i hope you got it so this is co2 okay another one is nitrogen oxide again the same thing when the quantity so here in case of quantitative pollutants it is a quantity which is released into the earth which determines whether it becomes a pollutant or not pollutants are basically unwanted material or undesirable material now it becomes an undesirable material only when it exceeds a particular quantity otherwise it is much required in this earth so i hope you got it now it is qualitative pollutant again qualitative pollutant they do not occur in nature and they are only man made so this is the difference okay A difference between quantitative and qualitative in case of quantitative it is naturally occurring in the nature but due to some man made activities or due to natural factors also when the quantity increases it becomes a pollutant now uh, qualitative pollutants these do not occur okay uh, this is very important sometimes you can get even statement questions statement wise questions so they do not occur in the nature and they are man made example fungicides herbicides ddt etc so these are some of the examples pesticides insecticides these are all some examples of qualitative pollutants okay next is biodegradable and non biodegradable okay i'm not going into that slide you have to tell me what is biodegradable and what is non biodegradable because uh, this is something that you uh, hear in everyday life biodegradable waste or biodegradable pollutants and non biodegradable i'm not going into the uh, slide now you have to tell me what is biodegradable what is non biodegradable what are the examples Sri Lakshmi is asking me smog. Smog is a secondary pollutant. Why? Because uh, smog is a result of uh, interaction between some of the primary pollutants. Okay, Neetu has commented non-biodegradable plastic. Okay, very good example and the example that we always use plastic. Give me the definition and also uh, give me. some of the uh, examples also yuvraj has commented biodegradable is observed by the earth or do you mean absorbed yes biodegradable yes it's absorbed by the earth or rather we can say microorganisms in the earth biodegradable is organic waste okay can you give me the definition yuvraj your answer is correct it's absorbed actually uh, i think it was a spelling error so uh, which is absorbed by the earth by the microorganisms your answer is correct yuvraj very good mm, sri lakshmi has commented biodegradable means which can be easily decomposed correct yuvraj non biodegradable contaminate the earth yes correct why why does it contaminate the earth non biodegradable cannot be degraded by microorganism yes correct answer sri um, it is neetu yeah correct answer neetu it cannot be degraded by the microorganism yes uh, so let's see biodegradable means those waste materials or waste products here means uh, it refers to pollutants okay 
this waste products here refers to pollutants okay biodegradable pollutants are those pollutants which are degraded by microbial action microbial action means the microorganisms which is present in the earth so those uh, pollutants which can be degraded by microorganisms through microbial action is called uh, biodegradable that means which can be decayed and decomposed okay example is sewage sewage waste it can be uh, treated even there is uh, some technology which in which microorganisms are used to treat the sewage so sewage is a very good example and if you can give me some examples from your daily life can you give me some examples from your daily life uh, for biodegradable pollutants from your daily life okay <laughs> something that you use every day It's certain waste that you generate every day in your house maybe biodegradable and non biodegradable biodegradable you can give for sure both vegetable waste yes uh, if you see um, okay especially uh, in cities and all what happens is uh, since like my native is a village but we are settled in trivandrum like for the last 8 uh, years so in cities what happen uh, you keep two baskets or two uh, buckets actually one is for biodegradable like you give the food waste the vegetable waste the vegetable peel and everything other one is uh, like paper waste plastic waste etc even paper is biodegradable but we dry waste we say so plastic is an example of non biodegradable which is generated in your house itself every day at least you know you, you uh, come across one or the other form of single use plastic it can be in the form of like uh, um some uh, some examples like for example if you purchase some packet food uh, like the curry masalas that you buy in your house it it comes in a one time use plastic cover again the chips that you buy from the shops um many many things actually even the pen that you use uh, one once if you use it and then if you do not refill it then what happen you will throw it away it's a plastic waste that you are generating so there are many many examples where you are generating plastic waste every day in your home okay and food waste it is biodegradable okay uh, so uh, this is example now uh, non biodegradable uh, pollutants okay Uh, and another thing i will i'll connect it here uh, is that uh, i told you that like um, i'm basically from a village uh, but then got settled in the city like 7 8 years back so in village what happens uh, here we live in an apartment we live in a flat but in village we have a house so um, there will be some land also so what we do after every meal after ev every time we clean the vegetables and all we just throw it into the land sometimes the birds will come the cat small animals and all they will come and take it so that's how it happens but there is a problem there not with regard to biodegradable waste but non biodegradable in most of the uh, villages what i have seen i don't know whether it is true in your case but it must be true non biodegradable waste what you do is you burn them this is a common practice that is seen in the uh, villages especially where there is no <coughs> proper mechanism for uh, waste collection so mostly even when we were in uh, our native place what we do, used to do is we used to uh, burn all the um, plastic waste the paper waste and everything and why i am telling you this here is um, this is a very important factor which causes indoor air pollution indoor air pollution or uh, air pollution which is restricted to a small area that is why uh, many housewives uh, we can connect it with some contemporary examples another one is burning of uh, fuel wood or if you are using wood in the kitchen to cook then also this can cause indoor air pollution that is why government has introduced the uh, free lpg connection scheme that is why we have introduced the uh, ujwala scheme uh, where uh, free lpg connections are given so i was just connecting because indoor air pollution also we will study when we learn about air pollution so i was just connecting it so uh, in villages especially it is a finding actually a finding uh, by niti ayog uh, niti ayog even in the economic survey this was mentioned 
in villages uh, where we do not have proper waste collection mechanism especially non biodegradable waste collection mechanism what the people who live in the villages do is they burn the plastic waste and non biodegradable waste so the air that is uh, released during the burning process it causes congestion and also indoor air pollution which can affect the lungs very severely and that is why a study conducted uh, reflects that many uh, women in the villages suffer from um, asthma bronchitis or lung diseases that's because mostly it is the women who cook and take care of all the household activities um, the male counterpart uh, he goes for the work uh, okay especially in villages even in cities we can see but still the numbers are uh, less like uh, many of the women they go for job but in rural areas this was a study and again uh, apart from women it is also children under the age of 5 years who gets affected small children who do not go to the schools because they will be at home before the age of 5 they will be at home they are not attending schools and they also breathe this polluted air so uh, it is a wrong notion if i say that uh, villages are very safe uh, in case of air pollution definitely the vehicular pollution or outdoor pollution is much high in cities whereas the indoor pollution indoor air pollution is very very high in villages okay hmm <coughs> okay i am getting lot of comments now sri lakshmi has commented vegetable waste rotten vegetables yes suprita that's also a very good example leaves of the trees these are all biodegradable waste again suprita nowadays biodegradable plastics are there yes there are biodegradable plastics yes vegetable skin coconut shell yes all these are biodegradable mm, smokeless chulas yeah earlier was a solution by government yes um, in kerala also um, there is one place in ernakulam district which is very famous for its smokeless chulas ma'am but biodegradable waste increases the soil fertility yes biodegradable waste increases the soil fertility that is true uh, that's what i said like uh, in villages and all uh, even in cities you know uh, if people have some land at least they can use this vegetable peel and all for some plants or uh, even if they are growing some vegetables and all you can use it it's very good and uh, in some places uh, this is also seen i i really don't remember the name we had that here but uh, because i have a very small baby we cannot keep it here that's why we just uh, drop that idea otherwise there was a pot i forgot the name what it is known as uh, it is like a three layer pot okay so what we can do is uh, you can put all the food waste biodegradable waste on the top uh, topmost uh, pot there are three pots basically and uh, you have there they will also give you some powder you have to put it okay and after 2 3 days what will happen is uh, from here it transfers to second port and third post maybe you can do it continuously for like uh, depending on the quantity of the waste you have at your home to 15 to 20 days after that what will happen in the last port the third port it will be some kind of fertilizers so that is also a new method by which you can uh get fertilizers out of this uh, biodegradable waste materials yeah neetu has commented yes alua that's pl that place in uh, ernakulam is very famous for its uh, smokeless chulas yes so yeah um so i was just mentioning about the indoor air pollution indoor air pollution is more in uh, villages compared to the cities whereas outdoor air pollution is higher in the cities but government is trying to uh, reduce the quantity uh, by providing free lpg connections etc even in villages okay e even i remember like uh, maybe till my uh, class 5th or 6th we also had uh, this uh, Uh, practice of burning firewood and all even though we had an lpg connection and all but still i think most of the you know especially uh, in kerala our staple food is rice so even in south india most of the places uh, rice uh, is like staple food so 
uh it takes a long time you know uh, it uh, it takes at least 2 hours and all uh, for boiling the rice so what my mother used to do is she used to cook the rice in the um, chulas only because uh, otherwise the consumption of lpg is very high this is like a time where we were not familiar with the rice cookers and all before that uh, i was i'm talking about my primary school days where we ha- we also used to use it and uh, even um, in villages still many people use the uh, firewood especially in places where there is access to firewood where you have some forest or some plantations nearby you have access okay so i hope uh, this much is clear for you okay <coughs> next we will move to air pollution but i'll start air pollution tomorrow only uh because in air pollution like if i start today what will happen um, i'll have to stop in between tomorrow we will start this topic fresh so that we will uh, cover what is air pollution major air pollutants and the sources of air pollution so here we will see all the major air pollutants then uh, somebody was asking me i think it's uh, sri lakshmi who asked me about the smog uh, yeah so smog also we will uh, cover tomorrow okay the effects of smog indoor air pollution again we will come to it fly ash fly ash is very important question was asked previously about fly ash so these topics uh, we will cover tomorrow uh, if you have any doubts or anything you can ask me now <coughs> otherwise we will stop for today because if i start this new topic then tomorrow again it will be difficult for you so uh, we will start the topic tomorrow fresh uh, that is my plan so if you have any doubts you can put it now uh need to has committed biogas from cow dung and some other organic waste yes uh, that is also a viable option yes so yeah and uh, not only doubts you know uh, you can even comment about uh, something if you know like how neetu has done now she has given her her idea not idea actually her she has shared her knowledge whatever she was knowing she has shared so i was talking about kerala because i am from kerala you may be from different different places and you will be having different experiences in your place how waste is been collected and how waste is treated in your place you must be having a different experience please put that in the comments so that we will know how things are done there also just that i am from kerala and that is why i am uh, able to uh, know about the things that is happening here so if you can tell me about your places then we all will be able to know what is happening i think there are people from andhra pradesh there are people from uh, uh, tamil nadu and where is uh, yuvraj from suprita where are you from from so you can yeah you can tell me where if from which place you belong to and also you can tell me how things are there whether you belong, belong to a city or a village you can tell me all that so please do put it in the comments today we have some time and if you are not very busy you can tell that yeah suprita i think you told me that you are from tamil nadu yes Mm, Sri Lakshmi has commented, government is providing subsidy. Yes, yes, biogas subsidies are given by the government. Yes. So you can give your own experience in your place how it happens, whether you belong to village or like urban area. How is waste collection and waste treatment done in your place? What are the innovative practices in your place? You can uh, tell me all that. You were at Suprita. Tell me how it is there. So we will have uh, some knowledge about your places also. okay so i think we will wind up today today's session uh, and uh, tomorrow we will start with air pollution okay so i'll see you all tomorrow the same time 7 o'clock i'll see you bye bye take care okay hello friends and welcome to digimento so yesterday we started with this particular sub topic that is pollution the impact of pollutants on human health so yesterday we had a general discussion about what is pollution we also discussed about uh, uh, what are the broad classification like biodegradable non biodegradable such type of classifications also we discussed quantitative pollution qualitative pollution so all that we have discussed yesterday in some detail so today we will be taking up <coughs> air pollution uh so uh, let's uh, see and discuss air pollution in detail today 
uh, today's session will only be like for 30 to 35 minutes because you have another session which is scheduled for uh, 9 o'clock so next session you will be having at 9 o'clock so I will uh, wind up the session early today so that you will get some break in between <coughs> okay I hope you have joined the classes so let's uh, begin but before that this is our channel and if you have not yet subscribed to our channel please do subscribe to our channel also share this video with your friends and if you are preparing for any online uh, so on for any uh, competitive examinations like the gate nta ugc net or pgt we are providing online courses for the same uh, you can get more details about the courses from our website www.digimentor.com or you can call to this number for getting more information okay so i think we will start and if you are uh, watching this video please do send me a hi so that we will begin as soon as possible mm. <coughs> so if you have joined the classes let me know so that we will begin soon so yesterday we discussed about pollution the definition of pollution uh, and we also discussed what are pollutants so pollutants then uh, what is pollution hi Neetu hello uh, so where are the others only you have joined so where are the others okay so yeah let's see if others also are joining uh, let's see uh, please do let me know if you have joined the classes so we discussed about some broader classification of pollution uh, sorry pollutants not pollution pollutants so we discussed about primary pollutants and secondary pollutants so what are primary pollutants and secondary pollutants primary pollutants they persist in the form of form in which they are added to the environment and secondary pollutants means they interact with the environment and then they are uh, becoming pollutants now we also discussed another classification of pollutants that is quantitative pollutants and qualitative pollutants now quantitative means those pollutants uh, which are already present but when it uh, reaches beyond the threshold level it becomes a pollutant qualitative pollutants uh, they are uh, not natural and they are man-made and uh, uh, in the original form itself uh, or uh, whatever quantity is added it is a pollutant now biodegradable and non-biodegradable uh, if you remember yesterday we had discussed this topic in so much detail non-biodegradable and biodegradable so this is what we discussed yesterday so uh, what about others uh, can you let me know if you have joined the classes only me too nobody else is it because there was a change in the timing even I was not aware about the change in timing. I got to know only very um, late, like about uh, 6 o'clock or 5.30 only I came to know about the timing. I'm sorry. So, okay, anyway, let's start. This video will be available on YouTube anyway, so others can also watch it. So, let's start with air pollution today. Okay, air pollution means, uh, okay, before that, uh, pollution can be of different types. Uh, we have discussed about that already so pollution can be of different types it can be air pollution it can be water pollution it can be soil pollution then what are some other kinds of pollution air water soil then other forms of pollution Neetu can you tell me what are the other forms of pollution some other examples noise pollution yes correct answer so noise pollution these are some uh, pollutions that we discussed in brief but now we will take up each of them and discuss in detail <coughs> because uh, as i told you maximum number of questions from this unit comes from this topic pollution so we have to go in detail okay so uh, air pollution is nothing but it is a contamination of air by the discharge of harmful substances so the air air is very important for life for maintaining or sustaining life air is very important so air pollution means contamination of the air which is an essential factor for ensuring life on earth hi lipika hi what happened uh, you were not aware of the time or something you know just asking you because uh, 
many people who otherwise attend the classes regularly are not there so is it because you are not aware of the time okay anyways uh, so as we said air it's a very essential component essential factor which sustains life on this planet earth now we know that we breathe air we breathe oxygen so air plays a very important uh, role in sustaining life in this planet so uh, what is air pollution air pollution means the discharge of harmful uh, components or substances and this will make the air contaminated and contaminated air will cause serious threat to life hi neerja hello okay networking problem okay <coughs> is it raining there lipika and what about neerja neetu i know it's heavy rains in trivandrum uh what about your place is it raining <coughs> yeah so yeah contamination of the air that we breathe by discharge of harmful substances now can you give me some example of harmful substances some harmful substances okay give me some examples of harmful substances some pollutants okay neerja has commented that it's very cloudy uh, there but not raining okay okay so yeah can you give me some example of harmful substances somebody harmful substances here harmful substances means those pollutants which pollute the air we have already discussed about many pollutants greenhouse gases all greenhouse gases are pollutants ozone is a pollutant yeah neetu has commented some pollutants in gaseous form yes but what are the pollutants can you name them lipika no no rain okay it's very hot oh okay it's very cold here you know it's like uh, even, we can even survive without even fan also it's very cold uh, since morning it's raining here <coughs> non stop rain neerja has commented methane yes methane very good example and carbon monoxide yes these are like two of the most important pollutants uh, which contribute towards air pollution yes so mostly air pollution is caused due to um, pollutants in the gaseous form like neetu has commented in gaseous form yes in gaseous form uh, only these pollutants they when discharged into the air they pollute the air and very good examples methane carbon monoxide etc now let's come to um, some of the examples let's see what are the major air pollutants and their sources um see pollution is a very important chapter for you because uh, most of the questions are asked from this chapter so you have to make your lecture notes for revision purpose also and we will see the previous year questions no doubt in that but still if you can please make your lecture notes so that you can revise it again before the examination we are not certain when will the exam happen now so uh, maybe you will lose the touch with the subject so before the examination for your revision purpose you can make your own uh, lecture notes especially for this chapter now the major air pollutants and also we will see what are the sources of these pollutants from where does these pollutants enter the atmosphere or the air <coughs> combined with the air first one is carbon monoxide carbon monoxide how it is uh, released into the atmosphere by incomplete burning of carbon based fuels now i will give you a very good example of uh, carbon monoxide uh, how carbon monoxide is released into the atmosphere yesterday if you remember we discussed about indoor air pollution do you remember we discussed about indoor air pollution we had a long discussion on that so we said that indoor air pollution it is mostly caused due to the burning of fuel wood now uh, incomplete burning of fuel wood which means that if the fuel wood it's not burned completely uh, if you have ever seen uh, somebody using fuel wood for cooking maybe in your house itself or sometimes you must have also used fuel wood for cooking uh, sometimes you know what happens sometimes if there is an incomplete burning you will see that some smoke will come out of the chulas so this smoke is nothing but they are carbon monoxide uh, like for example if uh, if the fuel wood that you use if it is wet or 
uh, sometimes when it does not catch fire much easily in all that situation you must have seen your mother or um, if you have seen somebody uh, blowing the uh, chulas blowing the air into the chulas then smoke will come the smoke is nothing but it is carbon monoxide so it it is released into the atmosphere by incomplete burning of carbon based fuels it can be petrol diesel or wood so wood is one very good example which we see in our house or it's uh, related to our everyday lives so wood uh, and now here you can connect it like carbon monoxide carbon monoxide is one very important uh, pollutant which causes indoor air pollution so you can get this idea also so incomplete burning of carbon based fuels petrol diesel and wood now wood which we see in our houses therefore carbon monoxide is a very important contributor to the uh, indoor air pollution okay i hope you got it <coughs> yeah so okay uh, next we will see carbon dioxide so next uh, pollutant is carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide we know it's very popular and uh, most of the times the efforts are made to reduce the carbon dioxide uh, emission into the atmosphere and carbon dioxide is also one among the most important greenhouse gases uh, we learned about greenhouse gases and global warming in the previous chapter so there you must have uh, you must be remembering that co2 or carbon dioxide is one of the most important uh, greenhouse gas so uh, carbon dioxide is the next major air pollutant so carbon dioxide uh, released into the atmosphere through human activities like burning of coal oil natural gas etc so uh, it can be released or emission uh, can happen due to burning of coal oil natural gas etc now neetu has asked me uh, carbon monoxide causes both indoor and outdoor po outdoor pollution uh, yes both indoor and outdoor but um, when it comes to outdoor pollution there are several other gases carbon dioxide is just one among them okay but when it comes to indoor pollution carbon monoxide is the most important pollutant okay i hope you got the difference outdoor pollution it is caused due to n number of gases there are many gases methane is there again um, carbon dioxide is there chlorofluorocarbons is there there are so many gases but when it comes to indoor pollution this is the most important contributor okay it causes both indoor as well as outdoor pollution <coughs> now uh, second one we learned about carbon dioxide uh, you know carbon dioxide in many cases like uh, vehicular pollution industries all these next is uh, chlorofluorocarbon if you remember we learned about the chlorofluorocarbons in the uh, chapter where we discussed about ozone so chlorofluorocarbons this is mainly released from air conditioners and refrigerators so air conditioners and refrigerators so you can remember it like this that uh, air conditioners and refrigerators both are uh, cooling used for cooling so you can remember it that way and uh, cfcs they are the most important contributor to ozone layer depletion so now cfcs they are replaced by hcfcs so cfcs are the most important contributor to ozone layer depletion okay i hope you got it yes neetu has commented ozone depletion yes so chlorofluorocarbons released from uh air conditioners and refrigerators okay <coughs> next is lead lead uh, it's uh, released from petrol diesel lead batteries paint hair dye etc so these are the sources of lead even in lipstick uh, mostly cosmetics most of the um, cosmetics okay so lead uh, it's released from petrol diesel these are the sources petrol diesel lead batteries paints hair dye uh, etc okay 
next is ozone now ozone uh, we know that ozone uh, it's found in atmosphere and also on the surface of the earth so ozone is found in the stratosphere and this uh, ozone which is found in the stratosphere it's very important uh, it's very important for sustaining life why because it will uh, catch or it will uh, capture all the ultraviolet radiation uv radiation so ozone layer plays a very important role in capturing the uv radiations from the sunlight sun but uh, what happens when the ozone layer is found on the surface of the earth or uh, close to the surface of the earth then what happens is that uh, these are pollutants so ozone which is naturally found in the stratosphere it is very important for maintaining human life because it captures or it uh, uh, absorbs the uv radiations from the sun whereas when it is found near to the surface of the earth or even in the troposphere lower layers of the troposphere it is harmful to the uh, earth now this is released in the form of vehicular emissions emissions from industries etc now uh, neetu has asked me why it is replaced with hfcs now cfcs are replaced with cfcs are chlorofluorocarbons and cfcs are now replaced with hfcs now why this is replaced with hfcs is because chlorofluorocarbons they are highly ozone depleting so these gases are ozone depleting and to minimize the effect on ozone layer this was replaced by hfcs the, the refrigerators and the uh, air conditioners they replaced the cfcs with hfcs but what happened is that uh, hfcs are greenhouse gases which means that they contribute to global warming so that is a problem so when we were using cfcs in refrigerators and air conditioners the problem was that it was contributing to ozone depletion whereas when we replace it with hfcs again the problem has arisen that is the hfcs are greenhouse gases and contribute towards <coughs> global warming yeah ozone in troposphere causes damage to human health yes that's correct so that is why ozone is also another air pollutant now next we have the spm which is a suspended particulate matter you must have heard about it uh, particulate matter spm or pm uh, now uh, i why i told you you must have heard about pm okay uh, before that you have to tell me okay uh, from the contemporary uh, example you can tell me where you have heard this term pm uh, can you think of it some current affair where you were seeing this particulate matter in the news recently uh, maybe a few months back can someone tell me where have you yes very good you were at okay you were at you came join the classes late but uh, you answered the question very good okay yes yuvraj has given me the right answer and very happy about it so air quality index this is the contemporary thing or the current affair in which we discussed or we were uh, observing uh, the particulate matters recently can you also tell me yuvraj in which city it is connected to mostly okay it's not just uh, limited to one city in india but in india there is one particular city for which the issue of particulate matter is very very high can you tell me which is that city yes 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 very good yuvraj due to corona lockdown yes air quality index was less yes particulate matter emission was very less yes correct answer delhi is the city delhi bihar yes it was in so many places but delhi is the worst affected city due to particulate matter now hi sumati hello hi uh, okay so what is particulate matter <coughs> particulate matter uh, or uh, it is uh, it is a mixture of uh, small particles that is why it is called particulate matter particulate matter and uh, there are two types of particulate matters pm1 and pm2.5 so these are very small particles and uh, they are extremely small and also uh, they are in the form of liquid droplets now uh, this liquid droplets it is made up of many components it can be metals it can be acids it can be organic chemicals it can also be dust particles but remember this name particulate matter uh, how it is derived because the size is very very small 
now in many cities uh, particulate matter is one very important reason uh, why the air quality index ha index uh, level the quality of the air is very low so especially in delhi we were discussing about this issue the particulate matter uh, emission the particulate matter in delhi it's very very high it consists of solid in the air in the form of smog dust and vapor that can remain suspended for extended periods so uh, this is one very important quality uh, sorry very important component which uh, degrades the air quality in the cities or in many places especially in india we have we have been seeing this uh, issue of particulate matter and air quality in the context of delhi pollution level air pollution levels in delhi now i'll also come to the point which yuvraj has pointed out even though this is not required for your examination uh, maybe this will give you some awareness about it <coughs> now uh, one very good observation that was made during the lockdown period when was the lockdown national lockdown nationwide lockdown it was from the last week of march to april so april or may first week so the entire nation was closed so the, after that we we have seen that it is only limited to certain region or sometimes some states have gone for a state wide lockdown or some regions have gone for a lockdown but the nation wide lockdown was during march uh, march last week to april and the first initial weeks of may so what happened during this time is that uh, the there were no vehicles on roads there was no industries running no economic activity was happening actually so because of all that what happened is the air pollution level has very uh, significantly come down in delhi the air quality in delhi also has uh, improved so uh, one very important thing was regarding particulate matter particulate matter the pollution due to particulate matter or spm suspended particulate matter became very very low came uh, very uh, less or consist uh, significantly low in delhi so this is one thing that happened during the lockdown and uh, i also read one article um, which was uh, it was given a title that si silver lining in the times of pandemic so this is a silver lining that is the silver lining in the sense that how the pandemic has caused a positive impact on environment um, there it was also seen that in many national pa parks and biosphere reserves <coughs> in india and outside india especially uh, in continents of australia new zealand and all due to the lockdown uh, due to covid 19 pandemic what happened many wildlife species which were considered to be extinct which were highly threatened they came back so uh, this is how uh, the covid 19 and the subsequent lockdown it had a positive impact on the environment for human beings even though it was a negative negative impact in the sense that in in terms of economics economic terms or in terms of money in terms of employment in terms of social factors like poverty unemployment etc it negatively impacted the human beings but for the environment it had a positive impact so that is important um, uh, yuvraj was uh, mentioning about that good yuvraj thank you so much for bringing that and uh, uh, helping us to again you know go through that okay uh, <coughs> neerja has commented that when farmers bur burn their farms after cutting in haryana and close by areas yes uh, that is one very important uh, factor and it is called as stubble burning so this is called as stubble burning no, so what is stubble burning so stubble burning means uh, the uh, the paddy the paddy fields the wheat then the paddy fields they are put to fire uh, after the harvest season so this is called uh, stubble burning and that is one important factor that affects the quality of air in uh, punjab haryana and delhi belt punjab haryana up and delhi belt this entire belt starting from punjab haryana up and delhi so this entire belt is affected due to this stubble burning okay um now let's also see two uh, two more gases one is sulfur dioxide another one is nitrogen oxide so sulfur dioxide or so2 it's produced from burning coal production of paper and smelting 
So, sulfur dioxide, uh, can you just recollect where did we uh, learn about sulfur dioxide apart from this? Um, any idea? Uh, do you remember when did we learn about sulfur dioxide? I'll give you a clue. We learned about sulfur dioxide along with nitrogen oxides, sulfur oxides and nitrogen oxides, especially dioxides. Acid rain, correct answer Neetu, yes. So, yes, <coughs> we learned about sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides uh, when we learned about the acid rain. Now, what are the main sources of sulfur dioxide? It's produced from burning the coal, again coal, then production of paper and smelting. Now, what is meant by smelting? Can someone tell me what is smelting? Okay, I'll tell you. So, smelting is nothing but the extraction of metals from their metal ores. So, extraction... Sorry. Okay. Extraction. Extracting. Metals from their ores. Iron ore. Or aluminium, copper. So, extraction of metals from their ore. So, this is called smelting. Okay. Uh, so, smelting also releases uh, some kind of uh, sulfur dioxide. And this is also a major pollutant. Now, next is nitrogen oxide. Again, these two nitrogen oxide plus sulfur dioxide, these are very important uh, when we discuss about the acid rain. So, remember that also. Now, nitrogen oxide, it's released due to the burning of fuels including petrol, diesel, coal, etc. So, again, burning of fuels. Now, from all these pollutants, what we understood is that one of the major reasons for uh, air pollution is the burning of coal burning of coal petrol diesel etc especially the fossil fuels we can say generally we can put it uh, we can term it as fossil fuels okay so burning of fossil fuels or burning of uh, coal uh, like petrol diesel coal etc are the most important reason for air pollution. Now, the question here is, we will answer this later. Uh, we will see that in detail later, but just giving you a hint regarding the same. So, uh, this is the reason why we are giving more focus on renewable sources of energy. Now, we know that coal or coal-based fuels like the petrol, diesel, etc., they are all non-renewable. We have already discussed about the difference between renewable and non-renewable. So, this is the reason. The non-renewable resources on one side, that is uh, that they cannot be regenerated or they cannot be uh, renewed for a very long period. So, renewable is uh, renewable renewal is not possible but also another disadvantage is that they causes seriously or significantly to the air pollution so air pollution their contribution to air pollution and that the fact that they cannot be renewed or regenerated so these are the two reasons why we are giving more focus on renewable sources of energy and what are the renewable sources of energy solar energy wind energy tidal energy etc and in india india uh, within the renewable energy itself we are giving more focus on solar energy what is the reason because of the abundance of solar energy available in our country because of our country's location so if we take our country's location okay so if we take our country's location we know that Okay, uh, somebody has commented that uh, black screen. Uh, okay, um, is there any technical problem? Is there, If there is any technical problem, please do let me know. Nirja, Ananya, if there is any problem, let me know. Okay, now uh, we know that the geographical location of our country, the Tropic of Cancer passes through the 
middle so uh, the tropic of cancer divides our country into two halves actually so because of the situation uh, so the countries that are located between the equator and tropic of cancer and again towards the south uh, southern hemisphere those countries okay equator we have the tropic of cancer we have the tropic of capricorn so those countries which fall between the equator and tropic and cancer and tropic and capricorn so these countries are uh, solar rich or there is an abundance of solar energy and that is why even within the uh, renewable energy sector we are giving more focus on solar energy and you have to learn separately about the isa international solar alliance the potential of india with regard to solar energy etc which we will be covering in a different chapter but just to give you a hint why we are focusing more on renewable energy especially solar energy this is the reason uh, why because uh, the non renewable sources of energy are uh, one reason is that they cannot be renewed or regenerated once it's over it's over forever or it will take millions of years for regeneration second reason is that they also contribute immensely towards the air pollution so these are the two reasons why we are focusing more on the renewable sources of energy especially the solar energy okay neetu yes she she says that it's fine again uh, neerja oh it's buffering for you neetu has asked me tropical region or near to equator actually tropical region why because uh, the tropical region is the region which falls between equator and tropic of cancer and equator and uh, tropic of capricorn so this region we generally call it as tropical region so uh, india has lo lots of potential with regard to uh, solar energy because india is also a tropical country so that is the reason generally we call it as tropical region uh, near to equator matlab uh, i mean near to equator means that um, uh, the between tropic of cancer and equator and between tropic of capricorn and equator so this is what i meant by near to equator so basically it is tropical region otherwise Nidra I hope you can watch the video now it's uh, clear for you now in between I also had the same issue here okay i think today we will wind up we are not going to smog uh, we are not taking up smog today because it's a little lengthier topic and uh, comparison between photochemical smog and classical smog was a previous year question also so we have to look into that also effects of smog etc so tomorrow we will take up uh, tomorrow i think uh, it will be at 7 o'clock as far as i know it's uh, the classes is scheduled for 7 o'clock if there is any change in the class timings they will let you know the team will let you know i am winding up today because you have the next session scheduled at 9 o'clock so that's why i am uh, winding up now so i will see you again tomorrow take care mm, so have a happy weekend uh, anyways during the corona days the weekends and the normal days are all the same for most of us but anyways have fun and take care i'll see you again tomorrow bye bye